Okay, well, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Um, we're really excited to be here on this uh, Fat Tuesday <coughs> discussing eSports. Uh, um, we have a, a great lineup for you tonight with our CS for All Teachers Community Ambassador, Ambassador Myra Deister and, <laughs> and Kevin Brown, um, who is the eSports uh, Program Specialist at NASEP. And so thank you both for being here. They have a great mm -hmm. webinar prepared for you, lots of wonderful content and interactivity in this next hour. Um, I mentioned as people are joining that if you can, the, the best audio to do is dialing in by phone and muting yourself if you're not speaking so we don't hear background noise. So with that, um, we will get underway. So as I mentioned, um, tonight we have two fantastic um, presenters here, Myra Deister, who is a CS for All Teachers Community Ambassador and a math and CS teacher at Sunny Hills High School in Fullerton. And then Kevin, um, as I mentioned, was the eSports, is the eSports Program Specialist at NASEP. So thank you again. And um, with that, Myra, I will turn it over to you. Okay. Well, I've found that eSports e is meeting kids wh where they are. Um, one of the parents of my, my eSports kids had, a, had an opportunity to speak with me a couple of weeks ago uh, about the fact that his son was able to to become more outgoing and uh, increase his circle of friends due to eSport. So that was very, very uh, heartwarming for me. I want to even say really quickly, hi all, Kevin Brown here, that we've got research studies that show that kids, when left with their own devices, are on their devices. That's up to 91% of kids with access to a smartphone, a laptop, a computer, are at some point in their day engaged in some kind of video game-like thing, whether that is something as simple as Minecraft or something as complex as League of Legends or any of the other games that you might hear. So this is a great opportunity to capture kids through their interest in esports and direct them in an educational way, which is what Myra and I are going to talk about. Please continue. Okay. We have our first poem. Uh, please take a moment to, to complete it so we can see who's in the room with us. Hey, we've got two votes. Vote your That's it. You can vote your mind. You can vote your heart. We're not looking at who said what. Just kind of poll in the room to see where we are this afternoon. Three of you, almost there, halfway through. I appreciate the candor. Thanks very much. Two more to go, another couple of seconds. Let those last couple of people vote their minds. Okay. Hey, that gives us an idea you know, of how deep we need to go in this. Um, Esports is a form of comp competition using video game. In fact, I have my have my esports e team playing their game right now in the in the room next to me. 
So they are playing as a team against another another team. Um, they played last last weekend against a college team, and I was surprised as to how much more communication they they had over the college te team. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, why should we offer the eSports? Well, some of the benefits are visual acuity, scientific reason, uh, language learning, literacy, pro oh, definitely pro problem solving skill, higher math achievement, uh, and Technology fluency. Okay, one of the things that I read about in a study is that in college, 62% of the esports to are STEM, STEM are involved in STEM, and um, I'm hoping that through esports that I can capture some of the students to try out computer science. Okay, it's also associated, associated with higher, higher GPA. Uh, at my school, I have to run a grade to check for each of my students. It also fosters personal growth, satisfaction with school, degree completion, and persistence. Uh, another thing that I've found is that colleges are now offering more scholarship for eSports. Okay, Kevin, you want to talk about this? Sure. So NACEF, the North American Scholastic Esports Federation, partners with Orange County, California, Department of Education, and also the University of California, Irvine. We funded a study by which we were looking over the course of a, the first couple of years of NACEF's existence about what's really going on in the classroom as a result of having an esports club on campus, as a result of having curriculum with esports kind of laced through it. And if you just, I cut out the, the, each of the names of the columns underneath it, just so you could focus on the colors on the charts, the graph you see in front of you, where you've got blue is science, green is math, yellow in the middle is English language arts or English language learner, so ELD. Orange is special, I'm gonna hold that for just a second. So you would imagine that something as complex as Myra has just showed you, that's got visual acuity, technological fluency, problem solving skills, something wonderful and gummy that is eSports is gonna give a lift to science and math. Logically, kids are telling us that they're able to apply what it is they've learned in math class. Uh, I've taught both high school and middle school. My middle schoolers were beginning to do algebraic function and actually got into low level, so like pre-calculus, as they were calculating statistics on the various uh, champions in Super Smash Brothers. They would look at Kirby and Mario versus Donkey Kong and Peach and decide which was the better working couple, who would be a better uh, squad to play. So kids are applying what they're learning. They see the throughput, as Myra was saying, in terms of STEM and computer science that interest them to want to pursue careers in this. In the yellow you see, even English language arts gets a boost. Now we've got lots of kids in I think every campus where you've got uh, the opportunity to teach through esports in English. English is sort of the de facto language of esports and kids whose first or second language was not naturally English feel a little bit tense when they have to go to class, have to write a paper, have to give a presentation, have to conjugate verbs properly, have to use proper vocabulary. But when you would come into the club space, uh, the pressures go down, you're more relaxed, and what's important is your nimble ability to communicate what's going on on a screen, how to react to it, what to do in the moment, and we see that kids are feeling better about their English language use through eSports. 
But let your eyes float to the right-hand side of the screen. You see that large, almost mountain of orange that ticks up there. That's the social-emotional learning quotient that research has uncovered. And we expected that, most video games being collaborative games, that kids were going to get a boost in terms of social dynamics and learning how to work well together. We did not anticipate we were going to get this kind of a rise, that it is really the formative element that is brought to the fore in eSports. So the kids are learning to settle down their emotions, to work better as a team, to take the smarts that they have and what they can do and use it for the benefit of the team. And in the red on the side, that's the uh, relationship quotient, how kids are getting along with adults in the room, their coaches, their teachers. Even that gets an uplift in terms of how eSports can be applied. Let's go to the next slide, please. There we go. That's great. We'll linger on that one right there. So there is, just if you let your eyes kind of glaze over all the small print, the qualitative analysis, this was born on uh, interviews with 3,400 plus students, uh, 1,700 adults, whether those are the general managers, the teachers, the coaches that we use in the room. Uh, and they gave us their opinions about how kids are growing in terms of math, science, also their language arts. But again, if you look and just let your eyes cast over the orange and that sort of hot pink color, that gets into, again, the social emotional part. So the idea that while eSports can be seen definitely as a boost for computer science, as a draw that leads kids down to a career pathway into the sciences and into STEM, they are also learning soft skills that benefit them both as students and in the world of work. Next slide, please. Okay, how would your students so I guess this benefit is, by offering, by ahead, offering a useful? So I think this is a fill-in-the-blank example. Yes. On the next slide. So it'll pop up, and you'll be able to fill in your own opinions, what you think. Now, some of you had mentioned that you've never heard of eSports before. This is a brand new thing to you. But even as it's just kind of percolating, just you're getting used to it, and you're seeing that there are STEM possibilities, but also soft skills that can be learned, how might your students benefit from that? Can we go to the next slide, please, so they can drop in? Oh, OK, it's not there. I guess that's yes. supposed to go in the chat on the side. Maybe that's what that is. So if you all could enter your opinions, in the chat box in the lower left, there we go. Thanks very much, Mary. Opportunity to collaborate. That's it. Yes. I just want to say that one of my stu students who was very quiet right, in class, um, we won a competition, and they, and they chose to interview him. I was surprised at how well he did at the at the interview. That's what Val just said right there, articulation skills, exactly. Again, this right. idea that practicing in the club kind of allows you to be as you are. Kids typically don't, um, they don't call each other out for little things like accent or you didn't say that right. What's more important is uh, did you get what we needed done in terms of the mission or the game at hand? So it's like there's a big chat window that's popped up in the middle. So Patrick and Val and Mary, thanks very, very much for giving your opinions. We'll give it another minute or two just to see if there's anything else that comes up. Of course, I could go long on this. Myra's got a bunch of examples for her team. Her team's a winning team, I have to say. I've got to give it to her that Sunny Hills, where she is in Fullerton, California, has placed or has won uh, in most of the games where they put up. And Myra, to your point, it's not just about the crazy med skills your kids have in the game. There are other interesting aspects that come up. I love the integration. You've got boys and girls on your teams. Yes. You want to talk a little bit more about your club? Well, um, I was sort of drag, dragged into this because the eSports club needed an advisor about three years ago. And then I saw the opportunity to play league uh, through our Orange County Department of Ed. So I just 
decided to attend the meeting. I was shocked at how many computer science teachers were at the meeting. But it worked out, and uh, we've been playing well. We also have a vo volunteer coach that works with our team. Yeah, Coach Casey. Yeah, the kids right. have really bonded with him. And again, that really oh, yes. highlights what we saw in that, in that graph, that social, emotionally, the kids, they're really good. Some of your kids are like top 1,000 in the nation in the games they play, but they're also learning that they can take correction and can take coaching from a near peer. Casey's a college graduate and also ranked in the games that he plays. And I was, I'm amazed to watch your kids, how they really respond and listen to what he's saying. Thanks for that, Patrick. Yes. That's it. That is exactly it. So eSports for kids who aren't athletes. Exactly. They are oh, ultimately exactly. Uh, skilled. This is I just Thanks read an, chat, an article oh, go ahead. about an aut autistic kid in college that, that, decide, that, that plays eSports. And he said that he had a hard time, hard time socially, and uh, he was able to to grow his his social skills and passion for STEM uh, through esports. There you go. So how do you get started? Let's show you the roadmap forward. Patrick and I are chatting back and forth here, and that's exactly it. Most of us are on this call. Myra herself, as a general manager of a club, wanted to reach out to, air quotes, those kids. Not the bad kids. That's not what I mean at all. I mean the kids who can't, don't, or won't play a physical sport, uh, don't see themselves in campus life, can't really find out where they belong. But when there's an eSports club on campus, the radar goes up and it's like, those are my peeps. That's where I need to be. They're playing the games I play. They like the things I like. I'm not held out as being strange, other, different. I'm actually accepted in that community. So this is a great way forward. So let's have the next slide, please. Sure. There we go. And here's a quick checklist we'll put up for you. So there's the NACEF logo. Uh, just five quick things to look at. How will you know, just at a quick blush, if you're ready to start an eSports club? Again, not a team. The team is a subset. So Myra's got a big club, and the team she has, the computer, subsets of that club. But how do you know you're ready? So let's go to the next one. And it's just five simple things on the metric. So first thing is, if you have space. This is a club-based endeavor. There are many organizations out there, we recognize this, that wants to help you focus on teams. And team play may be important. Competition is important. That's what kids are drawn to. NACEF's pro proposition is that the club is really where the formative elements happen. It's where education can exist. It's where kids begin to find themselves. So to have that club, you need a space. And that can be something as simple as part of the library after school. Uh, some clubs meet in their video design labs or DMA labs or comp computer lab like what Myra has at her school after hours. All this happens after school. You've got to have hardware and also very important, IT's support. If you're considering an eSports program, let's get IT involved as one of those very early stakeholders. IT people, surprisingly, or maybe not, get really upset when you say, we want to be in a competition and we need, we got, we got to be ready to go in two days and they've never seen any of these games, they don't know what the requirements are, we've got to get them involved early, have to look at the kinds of hardware that you have available. Uh, most of the games that are played in lots of the eSports leagues, NASEF in, in particular, can be run on computers you're probably using for your comp site projects, uh, any of your video game design classes, if you're doing coding, you've got something with an i3, even an i5 processor, that's usually enough. It's the video cards that really need the buff, I think. Except then, for most Overwatch. Important, there's Myra sitting right next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Some of the games are prettier or more visually demanding, so a better video card is better. Uh, then you need somebody very important like a Myra. You need an adult who's going to help facilitate that club. The kids will do the heavy lift. They become the officers of the club. They do the work around the club activities and things like that. But you need, other side, you need Myra because there has to be that adult in the room, not just to flip on the switch, you know, turn the lights on, 
but also to give that structure and to be the deciding vote if kids get caught up in something. Okay. And then lastly, if you want it, there's teachable content that's out there. We have ways forward. We've already developed uh, coursework that has been approved by the state of California because it's a common core state. That means 42 other states could also pick up our curriculum and begin to embed that into their high school or middle school days. Uh, we also help you make things that are bespoke. So if that's of interest, there's a pathway forward for you. Next slide. Please. I want to back up to IT support. Please. Sure, sure. I'm really, uh -huh. really fortunate on my campus because my IT person is also an advisor mm -hmm. to the club. So she's very okay. hands on. And That's parents it. also That's are important. Uh, I have one That's parent it. that will not let their, their student practice at home. So we have to arrange time at school for the student, for the, well, the team to practice at school. Got it. So Myra, why don't you go ahead on uh, the next part about this idea about how do you start out? Okay, definitely start small. So this idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually drawn into this because the eSports club needed uh, an advisor. They didn't have a room to meet in. So I agreed to uh, give up my lunch to meet with the kids. And they had lots of support from other students. They came in and met. And then we started working into leagues. Um, I haven't done the industry representatives reach out, but I'd like to. Uh, I know other schools have and are able to get some support that way. And hardware and bandwidth, I was fortunate. My principal has really bought into this and he has gotten the superintendent on his side and they bought a whole gaming lab over the summer. Okay, and recruit. Um, I st I'm still working on this part as far as getting students to do other jobs such as shout casting, uh, creating a website. And I do have students that create flyers for me. I, I, you've got a really great point there. And I know your parents are very involved. Just for everybody else on the, on the line, this, I think, is of critical importance that lots of parents have opinions uh, and their own mindset about video games. And some, I, I meet some parents and they tell me, I'm a gamer, I'm right there with my kids. When she's online gaming, I'm gaming with her and I make sure it's safe and we enjoy ourselves. It's a bonding activity. Other parents uh, are also of the mindset that uh, I didn't come to this country, I didn't do all the things I did to have my kid waste his or her time playing like a thumb monkey. This is not why we're here. I want you to have better and other. So it's important if we're going to start a club on a campus to have that parent sort of open house night and to be very frank with them about why we're doing this, what the benefit is. Again, you all saw the research I just showed you a minute ago. My five day a week job is doing just that, doing webinars like this, getting in front of parents uh, all around the country and increasingly around the world to let them know that this is not just a waste of time at the very best of ways and uh, a detractor, or actually a social blight like some countries think it is. This is a very smart activity, uh, one that does have roots, again, in comp sci, in STEM, that can lead to great futures for kids, not just playing video games, but in that kind of world of work that surrounds eSports. But parents need to be socialized because we do ask, as part of NASEP, that parents allow their kids to participate. Kids are always going to say, yes, I want in, I want to play. But parents also need to buy into this because we're going to go on a journey. We want to make sure that we all feel good about this as stakeholders in that kid's future. So let's go to the next slide, please. What do you need to get an e-sports e club started at your school or institution? I told you there was going to be a test. <laughs> Part of it were those five things we just showed. Yeah. but. Think about your own situations. Maybe some of you have esports clubs that are already working or maybe you're aware of them and you didn't know that was a thing, but kids are doing it. But what else do you need? I'm going to imagine things like my superintendent's permission. 
Yeah. You know, I want to make sure that I'm not going to get shot at if I if I start a club. I know Myra is a little bit worried. Is this really going to happen? Is this good for my career if I do this? <laughs> right. But you've shown. I mean, I, I'm, I'm highlighting you. You and your club have gone on to do great things. They have notoriety. You've got kids that are going to go on, I think, to compete at UCI and other campuses at college because they're that good. So they have the potential to actually win scholarships and get half or full rides as they go through college. So that's amazing. Right. Another way, to, frantically earn, typing, another way to earn money for college is, mm -hmm. stream, is through streaming. If you stream your... Uh, video game playing, there's an opportunity to earn money that way, too. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have heard the names of some of the popular influencers that are out there, but many of the really good video game athletes uh, also broadcast what it is they do, and they're, I think, more famous for their commentary and their insights and the interest that they drive with kids more than their actual gameplay. Yeah, it's fun to watch them. Uh, you've probably heard of Ninja who plays uh, Fortnite a lot, but then is now on Mixer and is paid by them to give his opinion and put himself out there and kids are drawn to that. We see that talking about STEM careers and things like this, there are more kids who watch esports play than actually play esports. So we know that there is a consumption factor to this. Mary says, we're currently preparing a proposal for the school board. I'm looking for an opportunity to simply try an eSport event. Very good. Is there a teacher professional development now or during the summer? Yes and huh. yes. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Okay. Um, one of the benefits of NACEF is uh, it's kind of like magic lamp and you're all Aladdin. You all get to rub it and great things happen. Patrick, we're unique. A local university has adopted us and is guiding us through the process. Fantastic. They've placed oh, uh, us in a contract with consultants. We've got administrative support. Funding is the final part. So yes. we're at school board proposal point two. Very good. And Ginny is just beside herself. I'm just in about, there we go, learning phase. That's OK. Yeah. You know what, Ginny? Have, You're here. You're I have up. friends who started out very slow. They run, um, now I can't think of it. <laughs> um, tournaments on consoles and uh, mm -hmm. that's how they started out and we still run those in our library. Sure. We'll talk a little bit about that but you're right that's the easiest way to get into this whole fascinating cultural phenomenon is just playing on a console, a PS4, an Xbox, a Nintendo Switch. If you've got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, that's what you it is. have yeah. an eSports club. <laughs> They will come running for that. Yes. And I see not several other teachers on Twitter saying that they run Super Smash Brothers tournaments. Those are the, probably the easiest to set up. Agreed. Ginny, I hear you. Um, I, I'm going to make sure I get your information. We'll be in contact. I think I've got something to talk to you. I love my small school. I'll tell you a story in a little bit. Let's go to the next slide, please. This is good. You're all just in this and rolling with it. I love this. How can a county office support, asks Sandra. Sandra, are you at the county office, or are you asking how do we get the county office to side with you? Go ahead and put your answer in the chat. I'm going to let Myra talk about this next slide. OK. Um, it's found that usually if students have interest in STEM, they are also interested in eSports. And it helps build a lot of the skills for STEM and they can transfer it into computer science. Uh, one of my things is that I was hoping that if the students become familiar with me, the computer science teacher, they'll want to take the course because they've gotten to know me. Um, and eSports and STEM go hand in hand. There's been studies that shown that uh, students that play eSports are more likely to be enrolled in STEM. Specifically, calling out these kinds of things, what kids do, talking about, like we said earlier, how can they use what they've learned uh, 
in these practical ways for esports. So if that's anything from using their comp sci skills, using coding to develop uh, sub-programs to analyze player statistics, to create websites and the graphics that go with them. Yeah, especially websites. Yep, that's very popular. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay, this is yours. <laughs> sure, so this is from, yeah, University of uh, California, Irvine. So we talk about their STEM learning, and these are actual student comments. Uh, you can tell because every other word is like, 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 like all the high schoolers speak. Uh, comparatively, comparatively, comparing to other, like other games I played, I've never really analyzed the game more closely than I have with League of Legends, mostly because of my coach. So to Myra's point, the coach instills this ability to be more analytical, to not be so passionate about, ah, oh, I just lost the match because my magic arrow didn't fire off into the bushes the way I wanted. Coach Casey slows down and says, think about this, though. Think about where you were positioned. How would this have benefited the team? Should you have been on the other side of that, that particular wall? All these things. So kids now are breaking down and analyzing the problem. What was the argument for why they did what they did or didn't? What is a way to take what the whole bench, the whole team brings to it, and then analyzing this strength as a new synthetic structure? Another part this is this is, idea, like we've been saying, is that, go ahead, go ahead, Myra. This is a good example of computational thinking that computer science is stressing. Yeah. That's okay. it. So the idea of that second bullet point, that kids on their own, they are so excited, they want to find ways to express about what they're doing, and so they will create a podcast. Two or three will get together and say, let's interview those rock star players on that team because we want the rest of the school to know how good we really are. We've got kids walking around on high school campuses with as much swagger and, and social credit, popularity, as the ball playing athletes are. So the scholar athletes, these gamers, are just as popular as the water polo players, the football players, the track stars, because of what they do. And students are actually asked to, hey, we love the way you sound when you broadcast about your match. Will you come on to the school's TV channel and give us a download about how the match went last week, how you guys just brought it to Troy and beat them up? Talk to us about that. And so kids will happily do that. There's, the, again, this technological fluency that makes them feel very comfortable in these surroundings. So again, all about STEM. And the fact that, look at this last one, homework, what we call chocolate broccoli, right? Kids have to do homework. We want them to practice and apply what it is they're learning. But when they do it out of a place of passion for something that they really like, like esports, it's not homework. It's not a chore. It's an extension of what they love. And they dig at it. So the middle school class I taught, uh, I gave them more homework, I think, uh, in the nine weeks that we had the quarter-long class. They had projects every other day, and they had to work on their own as well as with students. They would find ways to FaceTime each other. Uh, at the end of it, we had an open house, and I didn't realize that three of the students, their parents, were actually teachers in other districts. And they were amazed to see, I've never seen uh, Myra, was it actually one of the name of the students, I've never seen her dig into homework like this. And she was FaceTiming her friends, and they were looking at images, and they were both on FaceTime trying to doctor up a logo because they wanted to submit it for print because they wanted to put it on a jersey. Kids lean into homework because it's important to them. They see the relevance and the practical application of it. I sound like a salesman. I've got to back down a little bit on that. But I'm really excited as a teacher about why kids get into this. Let's go to the next one, please. So again, um, this is a webinar about computer science for all teachers. We cannot teach without this idea, especially in California. Social emotional learning is a big part of our state charter, that this multiple tiered system of support, the fact we've got to kind of get our arms around the whole student, we have to be attentive to what's going on in that child's mind and in their heart, because if they're not all there, they're not learning. And if we're not savvy to this as teachers, we can't in some way affect them and bring them back into the group. So we see that uh, eSports does drive the social emotional behavior. You've already seen on the charts that I've shown you, but I love this quote from the student that I myself personally have become a lot more calm as a person. We often, as teachers, as adults, as parents, think that eSports 
begets an angry child, that we hear about all the rage and what goes on. And I'll put it quite frankly, I've heard parents tell me, well, don't shooter games beget shooter kids? The research is showing no. no. And here's a student actually telling you from his or her first point of view, I'm more calm. I realize I have to settle down. It's just a game. I need to work the plays. I don't take it out on other people. We have to control our own toxicity, this idea that it's not appropriate. We're not good digital citizens if we're spouting off all the time, calling people out for being new when I'm the veteran and I should know better. It's really about that inclusive, safe, equitable space that we're trying to create with a club. And this, this is a, a lot of what we see coming out of these clubs. And I have an, Next slide. another example. Oh, please, go ahead. I have a team, hmm? team that was, a different team that was playing in league and they played against this team where a student was out of control. Well, one of my students mm. worked at calming him down and then uh, reported him to us who we turned him in, but our students re mm -hmm. responded appropriately. That's it, that's it. There's an old Turkish saying that says, learn to behave from those who cannot, but that's a great example that as we go through this club environment, and we hold students personally accountable for what it is we expect out of them, they're responding. So the graph you have in front of you now sort of bumps up to what we said before, but just let your eyes glaze over the, uh, the blue and the gold. So you're looking at schools uh, in relatively high income versus those in gold that are uh, more highly condensed into the free and reduced lunch programs, uh, schools that are in socioeconomically depressed areas, and you see that esports and all of those different levers, the STEM, the computer science, the math, the English, all of those things are more important to kids in those economically depressed locations. They're getting more out of the learning and out of that social emotional environment uh, because, of we, because we offer this, because it's a chance for them to see life in a different way, that there are other opportunities that maybe they wouldn't have thought of otherwise. So eSports and the fact that there's all this STEM and comp sci related to it really opens their eyes and they tend to, it's hard to read the small print, but they're applying themselves mathematically. Uh, the large spike in gold in the middle says attending to regularity. How do I use my problem solving skills? How do I use this not just as a math problem, but as a social problem? How do I problem solve on the fly? How do I relate to myself? How do I relate to others? All of that comes to the fore. So this is incredibly good. Uh, we're using this now uh, with kids that are on the spectrum, kids with the variable adaptable needs. Uh, we have several schools in Southern California down towards San Diego that are using this for incarcerated youth programs and continuing education programs to turn around certain kinds of behavior, to lessen the severity of absenteeism, to get kids to show up more often, complete work on time, and the carrot to the stick of just show up and do the work. It's, we've got this great club for you. Get the work done. Turn in a good grade point average. No Ds, no Fs. And we've got a, a whole room full of this eSports goodness for you that's yours if you can earn it through your own good methods. Next slide, please. We're doing great on time. We're going to have some time for Q&A coming up. So just a little bit about who NACEF is. The benefits of activating a club, I'm seeing in the chat on the side, how do I get involved? What is this like? We offer these five Cs. So we show you how to set up clubs. We offer curriculum that myself and others within Orange County Department of Ed have developed. Uh, we point to career tech education and a world of work that is all part of eSports. There are 15, 16 different kinds of work that go into eSports, not just the player who's playing the game, but everybody else that makes the game happen. As Myra mentioned, there is free coaching for clubs that wants to play the competitive sports of the season. We provide ranked coaches who are background checked just like teachers. They go through live scan checks. They are appropriate to be around young adults, but they're also highly ranked for the games they play, so they bring value to the kids. And then we do sponsor tournaments, a fall and a spring tournament season, and also various other games throughout that season. So. Kids don't get just the two flavors of the two big games, but a, a, a selection of other games that we also play. It's highlighted there in green, at no cost to any of you. Anything that NACEF does is additive, not prescriptive. We offer it. It is completely free. Next slide, please. The important thing is no cost. 
That's it. It's, I, I tell people, I hope I don't sound crude, it's my favorite F word. We are free. It's like that, that TV commercial, free, 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 free. So everything we do, my being here tonight, my coming out to you locally, my flying out to you if you're distant from California, whatever it takes to get you set up, we're here to help that. So I'm going to stop talking. NACEF does stand for North America Scholastic Esports Federation, Val. Hey, I just want to say that no, this I is can your time. see hmm? that I can see as my students are playing that ahead of time they're plotting out which characters they're going to select, which ones they're going to ban. Right. It's pre-planning. I consider this computational uh, comp computational thinking. So it's a good step into STEM. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now it's your time. Uh, we'd like you to, if you've got a question, unmute your phone, just announce yourself. Hi, I'm Mary from X, whatever your state or city is, and go for your question. We will try to answer that for you. Mary's question is, do you have a great logo to put on a shirt for a fundraiser? That's one of the actual lesson plans that works with NACEF. We uh, help kids sort of Harry Potter, like a sorting hat, recognize where in a domain of skill sets they exist, and content creatives is one of those four big domains. And then we turn it loose to the kids and say, you guys come up with a logo. You're artists. You've got ideas. What, if the theme is, I don't know, tumbleweed, so how do we get a logo out of tumbleweed? What does that look like? And we let them go for it. We've got, I've got my eSports shirt on. Ours is pretty simple logo. Stand up a little bit. For the, for the T-shirt. Stand up and let them see the whole thing. <laughs> there you go. You know, but that's simple, elegant. It's line art, but a student designed it. That's what's important. They had to go out. They've got to use the right kind of computer systems to do it. They've got to measure, and they've got to make it all fit. Uh, we have some high schools that actually have, as part of their business programs, they've got the ability to create the T-shirts, print them on, and then sell them as a way to generate funds for their esports club. So all kinds of ways to use this. The other thing is, too, but I, is that uh, mm -hmm. club officers are building leadership skills. True. Yes, every club, we ask them to form a charter. We have a template, but they nominate club officers, uh, four typically, the four you would expect, a president, a vice president, a secretary, and or a treasurer. And it's the kids who run the club. Obviously, Myra is the general manager, oversees that, makes sure all the money stays in the club the bank account. But uh, let's really, her students do the running of those club abilities, and they are sort of self-determining. Right. What's the average size of a club, asks Val. So we right now, I just did the count this morning, uh, NASA is 7,720 students across 44 states in, North, in uh, the United States three provinces in Canada, uh, that gives us on the average about 755 clubs, so about 10 to 12 at the straight line average. Some uh, clubs are very remote, so you might have only eight or 10 in a club. Uh, others are big like Myra, you've got 20, 30 students. I think our biggest club well, of record has I've had up to 161 50. students. Yeah, 50, there you go. So again, so they can vary in size. Again, the club is every child who wants to participate in some way of which the players are a subset. The players are usually 10 or 12 on a team and some alternates, just like uh, a traditional ball sport. What's the turnaround time for a club to be active? So the beauty of NACEF is that we have seasonality for the, the titles that we play. You may start at any time. You can start the day before school ends and start your activation process with the intent that you want to get ready for August, September. So it's a rolling environment. Uh, typically, it takes a couple of days because we ask you questions, you give us answers, we ask you for a roster of all the kids who want to compete or want to be part of the club, and their parents' email addresses, you provide us that. We send out parent permission slips when all those come back and they match up that Joe's mother and father said, Jess, Joe can play, and she's in, then you're greenlit. You're a club. You come back to me. I help guide you through the first couple of weeks of your club's existence, and then I let you free. Off you go to do those club things. And they also Over have leagues. 
versus community plans. Yeah. Community plans are more like one shot. I don't know matches. Waiting pools. It's it's some of, so some schools yeah. get on board, and they hear about this game called League of Legends, and it sounds really attractive, and some of the kids are playing, but. They're kind of new. We don't want them to get just right. stomped into the dirt their first season out. So we've got ranks. I should go over this way. Ranks of playing. So Myra's team is quite accomplished. They're way up here. But another club coming on board, uh, Charlie Brown University, may not be right up there. So we have other ways to introduce them to other clubs that are new at the game. And they can have friendly bouts getting ready for a season where they feel like they're ready to compete. Good call out, Myra. So far, Val is totally owning the chat box. Nobody else has any other questions? I will answer all of Val's questions. I'm sorry, Sandra, where are you asking questions? What's this year? Yeah, Sandra, and this is interesting. Sandra and I have been chatting a little bit. She's at a county office. And I put there that there are documents uh, that I will happily send any and all of you. One of them is an administrator's packet. It's a 58-page document. I'm sorry, 30-page document. And it's got all of sort of NACEP in a nutshell, what you would take to get started, what the curricular aspects look like, what the requirements are to put this somewhere on your campus, how would you get started. Uh, page 30 is really the, uh, is the big deal. It's sort of a three-year plan from immediately rolling through the first three years how you would get this going. So I see my emails up there, kbrown at ocde.us. I'll put it in there again, and I will happily, if you will email me, I will send that out to any and all of you. Okay, teams okay. compete from other teams across the U.S. and Canada and the world uh, pretty soon. I just got back from Japan in November, and the Japanese want to start not just a league. The Japanese want to have uh, student exchanges, teacher exchanges, want to do research with us. There are huge possibilities coming around the corner, and I would like any of your schools to take advantage of those. However, the matches that we have, we play West Coast mm -hmm. teams because of the time difference. And in the final match, we could be playing an East Coast team. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, that we, we learned that early on in NASA, didn't we, Myra, that trying to play across country, it's great. <laughs> Kids love it. But somebody's going to be three hours off, and either you're cutting into somebody right. else's practice or somebody's dinner time. So we do play in time zones, and Myra's quite right. As we get through to the Sweet 16, then you're playing whoever your, your noble competition is. Mary asks professional development opportunities all the time. NACIF has both webinars, just like this right. one. We have canned videos on demand. We have workshops that we put up, uh, sometimes in, loca in locations. So those are things that you might be able to come into. Uh, we realize that we are a global audience, so oftentimes it's in this webinar format, but increasingly so, we're putting out there. We have a, uh, now a brand new arm of ourselves called Scholastic Fellows. We're working with 24 educators, both middle school and high school teachers, who are developing curriculum, who are developing ways and means forward, so there's a great way to participate. So you'll hear more about PDs coming in the near future. No, uh, well, the way around, Val. So our, is curriculum is for the classroom day. Yes, certainly there are things that clubs can be doing. We call those beyond the game challenges, mm -hmm. something that's outside of the actual gaming day. Uh, clubs don't play games every day that they're in the club space. They have other activities, and learning may be part of that. But we have certainly developed curriculum, both English language arts as well as career tech education curriculum, uh, for the classroom use. Both, uh, so this is ninth grade all the way through 12th grade. Uh, also, there's a middle school curriculum that I've developed, and others have helped me expand it from a quarter to a trimester to a full semester long. And we also have it for out-of-school time. YMCAs and Boys and Girls Clubs have asked us for help, so we've developed uh, curriculum for their use as well. All we require is just for an interested school to activate a club, and it's done for free. Once you activate a club, it's kind of like the magical pinata. You hit the pinata. And all this cool stuff rains out of it. You have access to all of it. Um, well, one of the challenges to implementing a club is that the kids want to play all the time. So fortunately, mm -hmm. I have three other staff members that have stepped up and we're able to spread out the uh, meeting time and supervision time.
Myron, there's a question for you from Val. Do you have a class that is specifically for eSports during your school day? Uh, we don't really have one specific. We have a gaming and coding class that hopefully maybe might morph into something more into eSports. As we've designed lesson plans, while eSports is the throughput and eSports might be the outcome, the learning outcomes and projects might be around eSports, none of them are eSports 101 kind of things. I think because eSports lives in a world of both classical uh, scholastic development, so the A through G requirements, math, science, English, et cetera, but also uh, it is formed of career tech education. So eSports e isn't just one thing you can take. You need to have an exposure across all these disciplines to put it all together. So this is why we advocate a model that allows kids to dip in in many different ways. Again, looking at the comp sci parts, looking at how math and STEM can play part of this, and then taking a video production class and figuring out how can I be the guy that's on the webinar right now. Right. We've got just about a minute left for any last minute questions. I think the last slide is a thank you slide if you care to roll to that. Tell me in a few seconds. Thank you, Melissa. Oh. There you go. There Oops. we go. Um, I have some references that you can check out. Mm -hmm. Upcoming. And that's an important one. So Twitter, Twitter is a great space for us, for we adults, because apparently kids aren't on Twitter, they're all on Instagram or uh, TikTok. But for adults, there's a very robust academic, a scholastic esports community. Uh, right. It's esports.edu. And every Thursday at 4 o'clock Pacific, 7 o'clock Eastern, there is a chat fest that goes on. It is a host of different educators, uh, one who will drive for that particular week. And they will post questions, and uh, the discussion will continue about whatever that topic is for the week. So I definitely encourage all of you to look that up, esports.edu. Uh, if you type the at symbol first, you'll be able to find it anywhere on Twitter. You can look at uh, the former logs that we've had. And I think it's a great idea for you to get involved. Here are some so benefits this is Victoria with the S for all teachers. And, and go ahead, Victoria. Apologies, is that echo on my end? That's good. No, you're good now. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, all good. We just wanted to. This is Victoria. I wanted to remind everyone if you haven't already taken the survey that Myra posted. In the chat box, we ask you to please do that. Um, it just lets us know what we're doing well, what what you want to see improved upon. Just kind of a, a a temperature check for us, and and we always appreciate your feedback. Um, and then going back to um, Kevin mentioned that esports has a a Twitter account and and is active on Twitter. And I also wanted to mention that. CS for All Teachers, if you're already following it, we really appreciate it. If you're not, we have a fantastic community on Twitter. And I'll put the, um, the Twitter handle in the chat box. And wonderfully, coincidentally, serendipitously, uh, our CS Ambassador Myra is going to be hosting a Twitter chat next Wednesday, March 4th, on defining pathways in K-8 computer science. And so we encourage you to participate in that chat. You can use the hashtag cs for all teachers and CSK8 to follow along and participate in that chat. So we encourage you to do so. And then Finally, we also ask that if you're not a member of CS for All Teachers, we encourage you to join. Membership is free. Uh, all you have to do is, is spend a few minutes signing up on our website, which the link is provided here on the slide. Uh, we have more than 7,000 members communicating, collaborating, sharing information, 
sharing resources, um, everything that you need really at your fingertips in our virtual community. So we hope that if you're not a member that you please do so and um, join, it's free as, as uh, you know, we all love and, and appreciate. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. And if there are no other questions, I think we'll go ahead and um, close, close the, um, all the webinar. And we just really appreciate your time this evening. Um, Myra, Kevin, thank you so much. There was a lot of great information shared today. A lot of great tips, great, great resources, great data supporting eSports. And we thank you so much for joining us tonight and for participating in this CS for All Teachers webinar. Thanks for the opportunity. Excellent. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you all.